In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its ending, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its ending, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being." Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, Grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts, the fourth chapter. As they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of men came to about 5,000. On the next day... Their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, If we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, By what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Christ Jesus of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is recorded for us in 1 John, the third chapter, beginning with verse 16. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees a brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. 
And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs, overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the gospel of the Lord. Together we confess the, in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. What do you think about the fact that the Bible talks about Christian believers as sheep? One of the things that I learned growing up in an area where there was a lot of sheep herding, and I actually knew people who had family members who worked with sheep, that you find some amazing things about sheep that really make me have some second thoughts about this use of the image of sheep to talk about Christians. You know, sheep are not particularly intelligent animals. Sheep are relatively blind animals. They don't have a lot of what I would call really good hygiene, unlike my cat who is always cleaning himself. You know, sheep are so blind, in fact, that they eat what is in front of them and they can very easily overgraze an area and they actually have to be led on to new places to eat or else they would starve, or else they would die. Sheep really don't have the sense to run away from predators. The predator comes, the wolf, the lion, the whatever, and the sheep will actually, well, the sheep will let the predator take it down, kill it, do whatever. And yet, and yet, even though that's true, Even though the people in the Old Testament era and even though people in the modern era fully understand about the nature of sheep, even then, even then, this is a very common beloved image that the sheep and the shepherd is one 
is an image that people really like to think about. In fact, there in the catacombs in Rome, in those areas of worship, we find that there were pictures that were posted, that were painted on the walls of the sheep and the shepherd. It goes back all of those years, over 1,700 years, almost from the very beginning. These are people who understood what sheep were like. Still, they also love the words as we do, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Christians throughout the ages have longed to be called sheep of the good shepherd. We understand just how wonderful that image is because it reminds us that people like us who are helpless in our sin who can't do anything to save ourselves, who cannot provide anything for ourselves, they understand how the Good Shepherd, and when we are in relationship with the Good Shepherd, that we understand that God through Christ Jesus is taking care of us, that he has saved us, he has nurtured us, and he brings us home. At the end of that journey through life, at the end of the valley of the shadow of death, And whether we want to admit it or not, we are sheep. Sheep who have gone astray in our sin. Sheep who are walking to our doom like someone who can't see a cliff ahead. You can look through scripture and find all sorts of examples of people who had that horrible nature of sin, as do we all. People who you can see it from the very first pages of scripture who find that they cannot stop their sinning and they have to depend on their God. They have to depend on their Savior. And we know it's true for us that we sin in thought and word and deed. I don't know how many of us struggle with sinful thoughts. I think we all do. That sometimes it's thoughts of anger, sometimes it's thoughts of revenge. And we may not actually carry those thoughts out But the Bible tells us, Jesus himself tells us, that by the very nature that we have them in our hearts and in our minds and in our emotions, that that is also a sin. And then we have thoughts of all different kinds, thoughts of immorality and thoughts about stealing, thoughts about things we might not even do, but you know, the seedbed of all sin actually starts in our thinking about it. And then there are the sins of words. And sometimes those are very difficult to control. James talks about the difficult nature of the tongue, that the tongue is like a flaming fire. The tongue is something that will just lash out. The tongue is something that we we, we find very difficult to control. And then we have our deeds, and although maybe they're the easiest to cover up, sometimes we all have deeds, things that we have actually done that are not good. And yet we find that though we are like sheep who have gone astray, we have the good shepherd who has sought us out, who has found us. He is the one who laid down his life for us on the cross, taking all of the sin, all of that nature of sheep upon himself, And he is the sacrifice in our place. The sin of guilt is forgiven. All of it, it's gone. God the Father no longer sees it. And then he gives Jesus life again. And he also gives us new life as well in Christ Jesus. Jesus is the good shepherd who leads us beside the still waters. Christ Jesus is the one who restores our soul. Christ Jesus is the one who walks with us all the way through the valley of the shadow of death. We are more than just sheep. We are his sheep. He knows us by name and he calls us by name. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, he's calling us and that he knows who we are and one by one, he calls us home. And we hear his voice and we respond in faith. So, you know, the, in the early church, there in the catacombs, there were these paintings of the shepherd and his sheep. It's a reminder that for 2,000 plus years that the good shepherd has been leading his people. It's not just something that's new. 
It's not just something for you. It's not just something for future generations. It's for the whole flock, for all of us. Even those who are not yet part of the flock, those who are not even alive yet, or even those who are alive but they have not yet heard about the Good Shepherd, that we are called to go out and to proclaim the good news of the shepherd who calls them home. And the good news is, is that we have a good shepherd. It's not just any old shepherd, but it's a shepherd who understands the way we are. And he is the one who takes care of us, who nurtures us, who leads us, who takes us home. Now may the peace that passes all our human understanding, may it keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teachings of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend all who are in need, praying for them at all times. Thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world in its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Together we pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.